of this presentation. It is worth noting that the source of all the data presented today is from the AFS Pricing Dashboard Database. This database is the industry source of pricing trends for commercial lending and contains over $1 trillion in commitments with approximately 80,000 new or renewed loans being added to our database each quarter. In addition, the Pricing Dashboard Database is also used to prepare our monthly pricing trends newsletter. If you are interested in receiving our newsletter, you can reach out to me and we will be glad to add you to our mailing list. And if anyone is interested in learning more about our pricing dashboard offering, you can reach out to us. Again, our contact information is provided at the end of the presentation. Starting at the top of slide four, we provide some economic statistics to help put the fourth quarter results as well as the results for the entire year of 2017 into perspective. First, we can see that following two strong quarters, the pace of annualized real GDP growth fell to 2.6% in the latest quarter's release, but was well above the 4Q16 rate of just 1.8%. For the full year of 2017, real GDP increased 2.3%, which is up from 2016's increase of just 1.5%. Next, we see oil prices rose during the fourth quarter and finished at just under $54, which is an increase of almost $7 from a year ago. Also, as shown at the bottom of this slide, the 10-year Treasury at the end of December was 2.4%, which is down nine basis points year over year. Each of these statistics contributes to the U.S. economic outlook, and together with the continued uncertainty surrounding regulatory relief and the impact of the recent tax cuts, presents extraordinary challenges to banks trying to manage their bottom line. On the next slide, we look at rates. This chart is, provi is provided to provide some insight into the market rates versus the actual bank pricing as of the end of the fourth quarter. The numbers on the right of the chart show the year-over-year -year change with the arrows indicating if the rates are up or down. We see the 10-year Treasury, the solid blue line, jumped up 20 basis points from 3Q17 to finish the year at 2.4%. And the LIBOR rate, shown as the yellow dash line, at the end of December was 3.32%, which is up 50 basis points year over year. As we do in each of our webcasts, we will look at commercial lending with a focus on balance growth, line utilization, new and renewed volume, and pricing for spreads and fees. For our special topic today, Jeremy Charleston will examine industries with the highest positive and negative contributions to total balance growth during 2017. So with all of this to cover today, let's move to slide seven, where we provide a quick high-level overview of the commercial lending market. Starting at the top left, a quarterly trend of total balance growth is presented. We can see the pace of balance growth in the fourth quarter remain positive, up just over a half of a percent. We commented in our last two webcasts that the 2Q and 3Q growth rates were the slowest 2Q and 3Q growth rates recorded over the last five years. And now you can see that the fourth quarter growth rate was the second slowest 4Q growth rate over the past five years, with total balances expanding at a rate of 0.57%. One driver of this slowing is participations, which fell again in 4Q17 and is well below the growth seen in prior years. The top right chart shows that there was a slight increase this quarter for both new and renewed loans. The chart on the bottom left 
shows the weighted average LIBOR equivalent spreads for new loans and renewals were down slightly at the end of the fourth quarter when compared to 3Q17. New loans decreased 16 basis points and renewals were down 11 basis points. And finally, on the bottom right chart, we see that total fees as of December were very similar to the 2016 fee results. With this quick overview as a backdrop, we will now examine how these pricing dynamics are playing out differently across various lending segments. But before we dive into the numbers, in our last webcast, we left wondering if real customer demand would pick up in the fourth quarter, as some analysts predicted. We now know that the fourth quarter did not live up to their expectations. A recent Wall Street Journal article noted that several bankers believe that borrowers have been sitting on the sidelines waiting for the right time to borrow, creating pent-up demand for loans that will be unleashed any day now. In this article, the CEO of Bank of America was quoted, I think it will unleash some activity, no question, referring to the impact of the recent tax policy changes. <clears throat> Others were not as optimistic. The CEO of Zion's commented, I'm not sure how much pent-up demand there is. The lack of loan demand mystifies me somewhat. So what is next? Will the pro-business policies coming out of Washington lead to a surge in corporate borrowing? In our next webcast, we will look into how this all plays out during the first quarter of 2018. On the next slide, we take a closer look at the types of loans driving the trend in overall balance growth. The top chart on this slide compares quarter over quarter growth rates between bilateral loans, the blue line, and participations, the orange line. For those of you that were on our last webcast or receive our monthly newsletter, you may recall that bilateral balance growth was up about 0.3% at the end of the third quarter, while participations were up only 0.06%. At the end of the fourth quarter, we see a quarter over quarter increase of 1.3% for bilateral loans. Participation balances reversed the upward trend we saw in the third quarter and again finished in negative territory, down a little more than 1%. The growth rate for bilateral loans also surpassed the growth rate for participations for all of 2017. With bilateral loans increasing 3.2% while participation balances were down 3.5% during 2017. When we segment the growth by various loan sizes, the bottom left chart shows that the bilateral loan growth for 2017 was driven primarily by increases in CNI loans greater than or equal to $5 million, with CNI loans greater than or equal to $25 million, up 13.87%. For participations, the chart on the right presents the opposite trend. Here, balances decrease for the larger loan size segments, while the smallest loan size segment and CRE both reported higher balances. We also saw that only CRE balances increased for both bilateral loans and participations during 2017. The CRE segment is illustrated in greater detail on slide 10. Here we see that the balance growth for CRE bilateral loans was up a little over 1%, which is depicted by the blue time series in the top chart, while CRE participation balances were down from the prior period, with a quarter over quarter growth rate of minus 3.6%, which is much lower than the 3.75% increase we saw last quarter. The growth rate for bilateral loans surpassed the growth rate for participations for all of 2017, with bilateral loans increasing 3.2% during the year, while participation balances rose just 1.8%. Moving to the bottom left chart, 
we segment the CREA activity for bilateral loans by loan size and see that only the less than $1 million loan size segment reported a decline in 2017. This segment fell 4.5%. The overall increase in 2017 was driven predominantly by the larger loans, specifically those greater than or equal to $25 million in size, shown here up more than 10%. The chart on the right shows the 2017 growth for CRE participations. Here, the growth took place in the two bookend loan size ranges, both up around 6% for the year. And it is worth noting that the $1 million to $5 million loan size range shows a decline of almost 15% in 2017. Moving on to slide 11, we look at balance growth trends over a longer time horizon. Here, the balance growth for each month is measured relative to a December 2012 baseline period. This chart helps illustrate the bifurcated state of commercial lending. Over this five-year time span, we see that CNI bilateral loans, less than $5 million in size, have experienced a negative growth rate. The gold line representing the $1 million to $5 million range is down 7.5%, and the blue line representing the less than $1 million range is down 11.2%. Furthermore, we see that balance growth over the last several years was driven by larger deals, especially participations, which is the gray line on this chart, and up more than 50% and loans greater than or equal to $25 million, which are also up, but up almost to 70%. The black line in the middle of the chart represents CRE bilateral loans. As you can see, CRE bilateral loans have been a steady performer for balance growth, climbing 28% over this time period. Next, We'll leverage the pricing dashboard's drill down capabilities to pinpoint specific geographic and industry drivers of balance growth. First, we look at the state profile. You can think of this as the regional winners and losers. The top five states and bottom five states are reported. It is important to mention that the geographic area presented, the geographic data presented in this webcast is based on the location of the borrower not necessarily the location of the bank booking the loan. The chart at the top of slide 12 presents a state view for all loan types and reports the balance growth through December 2017. These charts are based on the change in outstanding dollars to determine the top five and bottom five states and then present it ranked by the percentage change. North Carolina reported the largest growth in total balances, up 9%. Higher balances, higher balances in the healthcare sector, more specifically in the hospital subsector, contributed to this growth. Georgia, New York, and California were all up more than 4% in 2017. The healthcare sector along with the traveler accommodation subsector within the accommodation and food services sector, were responsible for the higher balances in Georgia. A breakout for bilateral loans is shown in the bottom left. The total balance growth we just saw for North Carolina, Georgia, New York, and California was mostly due to increases in bilateral loan balances. We also see that Florida finished slightly above the 3.1% national average. Complementing the increase we just saw in bilateral balances for North Carolina and New York, the bottom right chart also, also shows an increase in participation balances for these two states. The electric power generation subsector within the utility sector was responsible for most of the growth in North Carolina. Using the pricing dashboard, you can also examine trends within states. Our pricing dashboard is configured to drill down beyond the state level and view trends for specific core-based statistical areas, or CBSAs. 
For example, we just saw Georgia in the top five states for bilateral loan growth. On slide 13, we can see that the 2017 growth rates for Savannah and Augusta were close to the national average of 3.1%. However, the growth experienced in these two CBSAs was much lower than the aggregate Georgia state rate of 10.5% and the other Georgia CBSAs shown on this slide. This granularity allows, allows you to distinguish the winners and losers very quickly and is the type of data you can leverage to be very competitive in your own markets. On the next two slides, we adjust our lens and look not only at the top five and bottom five states, but the entire country. On slide 14, the colors on the map indicate the level of dollar balance growth experienced by a particular state, with dark green indicating the highest level of growth and red representing a decline. So you can think of this view as a balance growth heat map for the balance growth across the country. The map on this slide focuses on bilateral loans, and we can see that balances were up across more than half the states with states such as California, New York, Georgia, North Carolina, and Florida experiencing significant growth in bilateral balances as indicated by the green shading. The two top ranked states, California and New York, both saw significant gains in the real estate sector during 2017. We also saw increases in the other services sector in California and the finance and insurance sector in New York. The map presented on slide 15 changes our focus to the balance growth for participations. New Jersey, the top ranked state for participation loan growth, experienced growth in the manufacturing of medical equipment and supply subsector during 2017. However, we can see that participation balances decrease across most of the states during 2017. In fact, with the exception of Colorado and Louisiana, every state in the middle of the country has lower participation balances this year. As we move to slide 16, we continue our focus on balance growth and highlight the best and worst performing industries. The healthcare sector ranked highest for total balance growth, with the hospital subsector experiencing the largest growth in states like North Carolina, Ohio, and Maryland. As shown by the bottom two charts, healthcare ranks among the top five fastest growing industries for both bilateral loans and participations, up 8% for bilateral loans and just under 5% for participations. We will be looking into the growth that took place in the healthcare sector in much more detail in the special topics section later in this webcast. For bilateral loan growth, utilities is an industry that was a consistent performer in 2017, especially in states like Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida, where the electric power generation subsector saw the highest growth. Honing in on participation growth, we see that the healthcare sector is the top performer with two subsectors responsible for most of the growth. They are the ambulatory healthcare services and nursing and residential care facilities. A few slides ago, we saw the granularity that the AFS pricing dashboard provides users when looking at trends across the country with insight down to the CBSA level. Our pricing dashboard also lets you examine trends within industries. Industry trends can be analyzed all the way down to a six-digit NAICS code. On slide 17, we see that within healthcare, nursing and residential, residential care facilities had a positive impact on loan growth. Drilling further down to the six-digit NAICS level, we see that two subsectors were responsible for the growth seen during 2017 continuing care retirement communities, and assisted living facilities, while balances decreased in the nursing care facilities subsector. 
This granularity is something for you to consider when you need very detailed data to support your pricing decisions. So far, we have focused solely on the geographic views of the data or views based only on industry sectors. With the AFS pricing dashboard, users are not res restricted to view one dimension at a time. Rather, you can examine cross sections of regional and industry segments to better understand what is driving balance growth across your own geographic footprint. On slide 18, we highlight each state's top CNI industry for bilateral balance growth. The shading of this map corresponds to various industry segments as detailed by the legend on the bottom left. Only a handful of states, such as South Dakota, Oklahoma, Tennessee, and Maryland, reported their largest CNI bilateral balance increase in the manufacturing segment, which is shown here with the light blue shading. In this special topic section of today's webcast, we'll also get into much more detail on the growth that took place in the manufacturing sector during 2017. To help you understand how the industry groupings presented here are defined, the next slide, slide 19, provides a breakdown of the industry groupings. We combine similar two-digit NAIC sectors to create broader industry groups. This helps to present a much more concise picture of the industry growth trends across the country. For example, we combine the three NAICS manufacturing categories into an aggregate manufacturing segment. On the next slide, we'll leverage the same mapping to analyze industry growth across the states for participations. On slide 20, we again see South Dakota and Alabama reporting manufacturing as the segment with the largest growth, this time for participations, which again is shown here with the light blue shading. States in the mid-Atlantic part of the country and other states sprinkled across the country also reported their largest increase in the manufacturing segment. As the last few slides have demonstrated, Overall balance growth has been beneath many analysts' expectations, but there are clearly a handful of geographic markets that continue to generate balance growth well above the national average. On slide 21, we present a more concise picture of this dynamic. Here, we identify and aggregate the top 10 CBSAs based on their contribution to total U.S. real GDP. The hypothesis is a region's level of economic activity is proportional to its potential for future loan growth. The top 10 CBSAs are illustrated in aggregate by the dark blue bars, where the lighter shaded bars represent all other geographic markets. Since March 2016, the pace of total balance growth for the top 10 CBSAs has accelerated during every quarter, far outpacing the growth rate for all other geographic regions. You can see on the far right that while total, balances, total loan balances for the top 10 CBSAs continued to grow in 2017, the remaining market seemed to be treading water, hovering around a 25 to 3% growth rate. The implication here is that while expectations for loan growth have been tempered as of late, the top 10 CBSAs are continuing to experience significant increases in total loan balances. On the next slide, we'll look at another component of balance growth, line utilization. Although it is difficult to tell the extent that each line moved during 2017, the chart at the top of this slide shows the overall line utilization rate at the end of 2017 was 38%, which is exactly the same as it was at the end of 2016. The greater than or equal to $25 million loan size range is the only segment that increased during 2017. An increase of 2.6% took place. 
We continue to see significant variation in utilization rates both within and across state and industry segments. As shown by the bottom left chart, line utilization for December ranged from a low of 24% for Arizona to a high of 51% for Utah. The chart on the bottom right shows the utilization rates for the wholesale trade sector and the retail trade sector that includes motor vehicles, electronics, and building materials are both well above the national average of 38%. We also saw a higher utilization rate for agriculture in December, but this increase was consistent with the seasonal uptick of approximately 5% that we have observed occurring each December in this sector. In addition to examining trends in total balances, the AFS pricing dashboard enables users to analyze trends for new and renewed loans. At this level, we can better understand the impact of the most recent lending activity. On slide 23, we begin with a look at new and renewed bilateral loans. Starting on the left, we can see that December's new loan volume is higher than last December, while renewal volume is slightly lower. However, both new loan volume and renewal volume are higher when compared to the prior month. Moving to the chart on the right, December's LIBOR equivalent spreads are lower than last December. Compared to last month, the weighted average LIBOR equivalent spread for new loans went down 29 basis points to 199 basis points. For renewals, the average spread rose to 230 basis points, up 14 basis points from the previous month. The drivers of volume and pricing dynamics are presented on slide 24. The charts on the left provide the state and industry dis distributions of new and renewed bilateral volume for the year 2017. On the right of this slide, we present the weighted average LIBOR equivalent spreads for the same list of state and industry segments. This view allows you to quickly see the correlation between loan volume and spread pricing. Focusing on the top of this slide, we can see that California, New York, and Texas captured the highest volume in 2017. From a pricing perspective, Loans in the wholesale trade sector, along with problem oil and gas loans, drove up the average spread for Texas to 276 basis points, while California and New York were closer to the national average of 224 basis points. Spread pricing for bilateral loans can vary not only across the states, but within them as well. For example, the average spread for new and renewed bilateral loans in the Rochester, New York CBSA was only 168 basis points, below both the New York average and the national average. Moving to the bottom left chart, we can see that the finance and insurance and wholesale trade sectors far outpace the other industries. While balances for both of these sectors grew at a high rate in 2017, spread pricing was below the all-industry average of 224 basis points. Across the top 10 industries, healthcare has the lowest average spread at 174 basis points, which is mainly due to low pricing seen for hospital loans. We also see a combination in food services with one of the highest average spreads at 268 basis points. And we saw high spreads across all subsectors within this industry, especially in the traveler accommodation subsector with a spread of 275 basis points. Next, we will look at the volume and pricing trends for participations. On slide 25, the chart on the left shows that new and renewed participation volume was up in December from both the prior month and the same period a year ago. Looking at the chart on the right, a negative correlation is seen for new loans and renewals when compared to December of last year. The weighted average library equivalent spread for new loans is down four basis points, and the average spread for renewals fell 26 basis points. 
When compared to the previous month, the weighted average LIBOR equivalent spread for new loans is up 10 basis points, while the average spread for renewals fell just two basis points. Moving to slide 26, the chart on the top left shows that during 2017, Texas, California, and New York captured the highest new and renewed participation volume. The top right chart shows the pricing characteristics of these states, and we can see that Texas posted an above average spread of 246 basis points, which can be attributed to the high concentration of riskier loans in the oil and gas sector. The average spread in the oil and gas sector for Texas is 312 basis points. The professional, scientific, and technical services sector also contributed to the higher than average spread in Texas. In this sector, the average spread for Texas was 318 basis points. California posted a spread closer to the national average of 205 basis points. And for New York, new and renewed loans booked in the finance and insurance sector and the manufacturing of food, beverages, and apparel accounted for New York's below average spread of 186 basis points. The industry makeup of these three states heavily favors the finance and insurance sector, so it's no surprise to see finance and insurance ranked as the largest sector for new and renewed participation volume on the bottom left chart. While volume is high in this sector, the average spread of 192 basis points was 13 basis points beneath the all industry average. Likewise, the manufacturing of machinery and electrical equipment was another large industry for new and renewed participation volume during 2017 and also reported a below average spread of 191 basis points. Within this industry, the computer and electronic product manufacturing subsector with a spread of 168 basis points contributed to this lower than average spread. Next, we look at the final layer of our market review. Slide 27 focuses on commercial loan fee performance. Fee revenue is a vital component of overall bank profitability. On the chart at the top of this slide, we can see that total fees in 2017 were identical to the levels reported in 2016. As we saw with loan volume and spread pricing, the AFS pricing dashboard enables users to examine the regional and industry drivers of fee performance. Mirroring the overall fee trend, the chart on the bottom left shows that upfront fees in 2017 were comparable to 2016's results across every geographic region. From an industry perspective, the bottom right chart shows the industries with the largest increases in 2017 were mining and information. As we've seen throughout this presentation, the pricing dashboard can be used to shed light on loan growth trends for specific geographic and industry segments. Many of our clients are using the dashboard in this precise manner in order to gain strategic intelligence into both new and existing markets. As a template for this type of analysis, on slide 28, we organize the states into seven broad geographic areas. Let's say, for example, that your bank was thinking of increasing its market share in the eastern Midwest part of the country. The top right map highlights the eastern Midwest region. Using the pricing dashboard, we can see that healthcare is one of the top industries for bilateral loan growth in this region. The leading industries for balanced growth across the other areas of the country are shown on the bottom of this slide and on the next slide. This is a quick way to see which industries rank among the best performers across the country. It is worth mentioning that the pricing dashboard allows users to analyze all the major metropolitan areas in the country. 
to support specific regional pricing strategies, we have also helped users define their own custom regional footprints in an effort to pinpoint specific loan growth opportunities in their own markets. Please let us know if we can help you with this type of analysis. Again, our contact information is provided at the end of this presentation. Now, in the next section of the webcast, Jeremy Charleston will delve further into the industries with the highest positive and negative contributions to total balance growth in 2017. This will build on our previous webcast where we examine balance growth trends in the context of pricing and risk trends for leading industries. Jeremy? Great, thank you, Don. As Don mentioned, today's section is really a continuation of some discussions we've had in prior webinars uh, where we've looked at balance growth in the context of risk and return. The idea is to demonstrate how the pricing dashboard can be used to pinpoint sustainable growth opportunities for banks. And what we'd like to do today is refine this format by focusing on two particular industries with major impacts on loan growth, those being healthcare and manufacturing. So here's a slide that we presented in the last few webcasts, and I think it's a really helpful way of categorizing the results and illustrating the revenue, risk, and return parameters uh, that we can use to identify where the opportunities may lie from either an industry or a regional perspective. Uh, you can see here we look at things like balance growth, so are banks getting their fair share of wallet in particular industries? Uh, we certainly analyze the spread and the fee characteristics. Uh, sometimes we see that markets with high levels of balance growth have very competitive pricing profiles. And then, of course, we also incorporate some flavor of risk into the analysis as well to help show from a risk return perspective, are these segments, are these industries holding water, and are they good opportunities for banks going forward? Uh, so as we proceed through the analysis, we'll rank the segments, we'll rank the industries and the regions according to each layer that you see pictured here and point out any consistent under or over performers in the data set. So I want to start with a picture of total balance growth and here we present the data a little bit differently than what you saw on some of the preceding slides. What we've done here is express each industry's annual loan growth as a fraction of the total net change in balances seen during 2017. Uh, so Don had already pointed out that healthcare was a leading growth driver in 2017, both for bilateral loans and in the participated syndicated space. And that's a trend you definitely see reflected here in this picture. Of the total net increase in commercial loan balances this year, healthcare accounted for more than half of that overall change. Uh, we've been listening to a lot of the bank earning calls recently, uh, and this data confirms what we're, the earnings calls confirms what we're seeing here in the data set. Uh, that growth in CNI loans, where it does exist, is coming mainly from specialized industry verticals, uh, with healthcare frequently mentioned as one such segment uh, in the earnings calls by many banks. On the opposite end of this chart, on the opposite end of the spectrum, we can see that manufacturing was the biggest drag on balance growth in 2017. It had the largest overall decline in balances, uh, similar in that in magnitude to the increase that we saw in healthcare. So over the next two slides, these are gonna be our two industries in focus, with healthcare being the industry that was most responsible for the positive change, and then manufacturing, which may help explain why balance growth in 2017 didn't quite live up to what we saw in the preceding year. On the next slide, we more closely examine the loan growth trends within the healthcare industry. From a loan size perspective, the drivers of loan growth are different in uh, several ways for healthcare compared to what we see at the total CNI level. So for example, while growth and participation slowed in 2017 for the overall CNI market, healthcare actually posted positive growth in this segment it wasn't quite the same high rate that we saw in 2016, but participations are still a very important growth driver of healthcare. 
that's actually a pretty big change from what we had seen in prior years. Healthcare used to be mainly comprised of bilateral loans, and really over the last couple of years, we've seen more migration into the participated syndicated space. Uh, within healthcare, larger end bilateral loans, as well as commercial real estate healthcare loans, both showed an acceleration in balance growth in 2017. Uh, when we say CRE for healthcare loans, uh, that could be, for example, nursing care loans, where the primary source of the repayment stems essentially from the rental income associated with filling up rooms and, and getting more residents. Uh, so definitely seeing a bit of an acceleration in uh, that particular segment as well as it relates to healthcare. So speaking of the nursing and residential care subsector, we thought it would be helpful to examine these same loan growth trends for that particular segment of the healthcare space. Uh, nursing and residential care facilities was one of the subsegments most responsible for the broader healthcare industry's strong year for loan growth. Uh, we could speculate on the reasons for this, but no doubt an aging population and other demographic factors are helping to fuel balance growth in this particular subsector. Uh, unlike most other industries, balance growth in the less than 1 million range, that range on the far left, was not only positive for nursing and care facilities, but it actually accelerated in 2017 over the prior year. That's definitely a different trend than what we're seeing at the total CNI level. We've been tracking the smaller end loans uh, shrinking for quite some time now, and yet clearly in this industry, there does seem to be some loan demand in the smaller end of the market. Uh, also for nursing care facilities, the highest rates of loan growth that we saw in 2017 were for the commercial real estate segment and the participation segments, both shown on the far right of this chart. Of course, the trends for healthcare vary substantially across geographic markets. Uh, we know from working with many of you that competitive conditions in, say, Philadelphia can differ uh, very much so from those in Miami, even when you look at loans in the same industry. So to help capture these dynamics and show our clients how we can use the pricing dashboard to uh, illustrate these factors, we'll examine how the broader healthcare trends are playing out across the micro markets shown here on this map. Uh, it's certainly not all the major hubs for healthcare in the database, but we believe these five provide good coverage across the country and form a, uh, a solid representative sample. So using these micro markets, let's examine balance growth variation for the healthcare industry. The layout here shows the entire healthcare industry on the left-hand side, and then the subsector profile on the right-hand side. And in this case, our subsector of choice is nursing care facilities. Across these metros, Chicago reported the highest percentage increase in healthcare balances on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, the growth rate for Chicago was well above the national average for healthcare, uh, the national average given to you by that dotted black line cutting across the chart. Uh, conversely, healthcare balances were down uh, and in the red for Nashville and Philadelphia. Directionally speaking, balance growth trends across the CBSAs are similar when we restrict the view to just the nursing care facilities on the right. Uh, here again, Chicago ranked highest for balance growth, so definitely some good momentum in that metro. And then again, Nashville and Philadelphia both reported pretty steep declines for nursing care facility loans. On the next slide, we have a similar picture where now the metric is uh, LIBOR equivalent spread, so looking at spread pricing here. And starting on the left, we can see that four of the five geographic markets displayed spreads above the national average for healthcare, uh, with only Philadelphia falling behind the average. Uh, spreads in this industry ranged from a high of 213 basis points in Chicago to a low of 172 basis points in Philadelphia. For nursing care facilities on the right, we see a wider range in spread pricing across the regions, which is probably to be expected at the, uh, at the subsector level. What's interesting here, though, is that the regional market with the highest rate of loan growth for nursing care facilities, which is Chicago, also posted the highest average LIBOR equivalent spread. We, we don't always see that, that kind of dynamic play out. 
And conversely, Nashville, which had the deepest decline in balances for nursing care facilities, had um, the lowest average spread. So uh, some interesting growth and pricing dynamics occurring within this uh, subsector in the healthcare space. A question we hear a lot from our clients is, are we leaving fees on the table? Uh, sometimes we see industries with good spreads, but with very, very low fee levels. Uh, as you can see by the left-hand chart on this slide, all five of our selected geographies for healthcare reported upfront fee levels beneath the national average for the healthcare industry. Uh, recall from the prior slide that for healthcare loans, Philly ranked lowest for spread pricing. And a similar result was observed here in terms of fee levels for the same metro. It had a very low fee level compared to the other geographic regions. Uh, at the subsector level, though, uh, the results are very different. If you look at the right-hand chart, uh, we can see that Philadelphia ranked highest in terms of upfront fees for the nursing care subsector, uh, with an upfront fee level well above the average for that subsector. Of course, you have to incorporate some dimension or some element of risk when you analyze uh, spread and fee profiles. And what we've done here is look at weighted average risk ratings across these same metros. When we say weighted average risk rating, that's based on the RMA 10-point Obligor risk rating scale, which contains six pass gradations and the standard regulatory classifications of special mention, substandard, doubtful, and loss. On this scale, a rating of five would be a loan of average credit quality. Healthcare overall is generally thought to be a low risk sector, at least compared to something like oil and gas or uh, even a middle of the road industry like manufacturing. And from a regional standpoint, credit risk in healthcare is certainly not uniform. Uh, for healthcare loans, uh, Miami exhibits the lowest weighted average risk rating at 3.7 in the middle of that chart on the left, whereas Los Angeles bears the highest weighted average risk rating at 4.9. Interestingly, uh, curiously, the profiles switch when we restrict the view to nursing care subsector. Uh, at this level, Miami, if you look on the right-hand chart, is actually worse than average for credit risk. So while it looks well at the healthcare level, when we drill into the subsector, Miami no longer has that uh, exceptional credit risk profile. And conversely, Los Angeles, which for overall healthcare industry is worse than average, when we look at the subsector, it actually has a weighted average risk rating that's a little bit better. So it really helps illustrate that even when you focus on an industry, the subsector can definitely drive results and show uh, very unique profiles. So let's now turn our attention to another important industry in 2017, uh, namely manufacturing. Recall from earlier that manufacturing was the largest drag on balance growth in 2017, with a large overall drop in commercial loan balances. Manufacturing is a broad and diverse industry, both in terms of the subsectors that comprise it, uh, as well as its mix of loan types and bilateral loans and participations. For manufacturing, balances were down in 2017 for loans under $5 million in size, uh, mirroring drops of similar magnitude that we saw in 2016. Much like the overall market, loan growth in manufacturing was led by bilateral loans above the $5 million threshold. So you can see that the dark blue series is especially high for the $5 to $25 million range and then bilateral loans in that greater than $25 million segment. But perhaps the most significant change in balance growth that we observed for this industry was for participations. Manufacturing participations were down in 2017, which was a sharp reversal of the trend that we had seen in 2016. At the subsector level, the decline in manufacturing balances was focused heavily in a segment called computer and electronic manufacturing. Uh, I believe that many of these companies tend to fall along the larger end of the market, and according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, this segment has experienced rapid growth in economic activity over the last several years. 
Uh, in terms of recent loan balance declines for this industry, there are two primary explanations from a loan size standpoint. First, the slump in the smaller end ranges deepened. If you look at the first two segments on this chart, you can see how loans less than a million dollars in size and one to five million in size both had even steeper drops in 2017 versus the prior year. And second, much like we saw at the overall industry level, uh, we saw a sharp reversal in participation balance growth for this subsector where it was negative in 2017. That probably more than anything else was the leading cause for this subsector's decline. So following the same approach that we employed with the healthcare industry, we'll next take a look at the regional variation in lending and pricing trends for manufacturing. Uh, the map here shows the micro markets that we chose. And again, our intent is to choose a diverse, a diverse and well spread out sample. From a regional standpoint, the decline in manufacturing balances was spread out across the country, but Minneapolis in particular showed an especially large drop. Uh, Minneapolis is fourth from the right on these balance growth pictures. Uh, still, the thing I really like about these CBSA charts is that they show just how different the story can be for some areas of the country. While overall manufacturing balances were down in 2017, Dallas and New York both experienced healthy growth uh, in this same industry. Then for the computer and electronic subsector on the right-hand side of this picture of this slide, uh, Minneapolis mirrored the broader trend with a really steep decline in balances while Atlanta, the highest green bar on the right-hand chart, demonstrated very good growth in the segment. So again, when you look across the subsectors, it does not always conform to that national trend. For spread pricing in the manufacturing sector, three of the five selected CBSAs displayed average LIBOR equivalent spreads on par with the industry mean. Uh, the spread for Minneapolis was slightly beneath the sector average. Uh, keep that particular fact in mind uh, when we look at fees just a few slides from now. Dallas stands out on the left-hand chart as having the highest average spread for the manufacturing sector. The higher spread for Dallas is a direct result of loans in the computer and electronic subsector on the far right of this slide where Dallas attained a high spread of 370 basis points, which is much higher than the other, sub, uh, other geographic regions we have plotted on this view. Not sure at this particular moment why Dallas outperformed the other markets to such an extent for computer and electronic product manufacturing, but perhaps borrowers in Dallas uh, cater to an even smaller niche within this subsector. So we had pointed out on the last slide that Minneapolis reported an average spread for manufacturing loans that was uh, slightly beneath the sector mean. And based on the next slide, uh, banks in this metro are not making up for lower spreads in the form of higher fees. If you look on the left-hand chart, uh, of all these selected geographies that we plot, you can see that Minneapolis had the lowest upfront fee level at only 11 basis points. For the computer and electronic product manufacturing subsector, that plotted again on the right-hand side of this page, uh, we note Dallas as an outlier in terms of fees realized in this industry segment. Uh, you can see Dallas had an average upfront fee level of 64 basis points, which was more than twice the national average for loans in this particular subsector. And finally, to wrap up this analysis of manufacturing, uh, we want to look at the credit profiles across these regions. While manufacturing might be thought of as a riskier industry than, say, healthcare, what's interesting here is that every one of our selected geographic markets show weighted average risk ratings for manufacturing loans lower than five. Again, a five corresponds to a loan of average risk. So most of these loans have high to moderate past credits uh, in their manufacturing portfolios. Now, looking at the profiles for the subsector, computer and electronic product manufacturing on the right-hand side, 
we can see that Atlanta really stands out as having a very favorable credit risk profile compared with the other geographic markets pictured. Its weighted average risk rating uh, is very, very low compared to some of the other markets. I think Atlanta may have been in the running for the Amazon 20 at one point. That's probably an incidental observation, but uh, an interesting one nonetheless. And finally, I just want to leave uh, this section with uh, one of the new metrics that we've developed over the last several months. We're calling it the spread per unit of risk, and essentially what it is is it takes the LIBOR equivalent spreads and weights them by their corresponding risk rating. So it's, it's almost like a risk-adjusted spread, if you will. Uh, the reason we point this out is we're hearing a lot in the bank's earning calls about uh, words like de-risking and optimization. And by using this metric, banks can rank order industries, geographies to pinpoint which sectors have the most attractive risk profiles and which sectors they want to invest more in in order to optimize their prof uh, profiles and portfolios. As Don mentioned, that's really the goal of a lot of the analyses we do. And if we can help you with identifying those segments, uh, you know, by all means, uh, please contact us at, you know, with our contact information at the end. So with that, I think we'll take a moment to collect a few questions from the audience. All right, thank you everyone. It doesn't look like we have any questions today, so we're going to end our webinar and thank you for joining us.